In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we continue in a two-part series of looking at a step-by-step -step approach to creating an introductory video that has three video clips and four titles. It comes from an example we showed that some of the subscribers liked and said, can you show us step-by-step -step how to do this? Well, we'd like to show you that example, and then we'll show you the second half of the process on how to build this yourself. We've already taken our four titles and placed them on track number two. We have a color board on track number one, and we also have an audio clip music on track number seven. Now it's time to do something with the videos. So I'm going to move up to give myself a bit more room, and now we're going to drop the videos in. I want each video to occupy part of the screen following the particular title. So I'm going to take this video and drop it and and put it behind title number one. I'm going to turn these tracks back on. I'll show you why I'm going to turn them back off in a moment. I'll take the second video and drop it so it starts after title number two. And we'll take the third one and we'll start that after title number three. Now I'm going to turn off the track four and three videos because I need to manipulate these one at a time and if they're layered together it will be a bit confusing. So we'll give ourselves a bit more room. I'm going to go from bottom to top in this case. I've got the last video that I want and the last video is going to appear at the bottom. So I'm going to take this video and I need to resize it and relocate it. And that will do for now. The other thing I want to do is create a, an introduction using the technique that this was demonstrated in before. To do that, I'll click on my Tools menu. I'll choose my Mask Designer. I want a full screen mask. I don't have quite a full screen mask. I do have a square mask. I will use that. You notice it cuts it on the right and left side. I don't want that, so I'm going, going to go down, uncheck Maintain Aspect Ratio. And I'll change this from 0.75. I'll just type in 1 and press Enter. And now it's the full video. So we're going to start out with small and scale it up. I'll set a, a keyframe by clicking on the diamond. I'm going to move in about oh, a second and a half or so. Click a, another keyframe by clicking on the diamond. And since I want it to start small, I'm going to click on the little blue left triangle. Move to the first keyframe. And here we're going to change the, let's go with height in this case. And so when we play this, it will automatically open up. And that will work for us for now. We're going to edit this one later. I'll show you why. Click on OK. And then we're going to make that track invisible. Go to the track above. And now we'll highlight that video. This one will go up to the upper right, so we'll resize it as well. And we'll relocate it to the upper right quadrant. And in this case, what we want to do is also give it that introductory look. I'll click on Tools. We'll go to Mask Designer on that one as well. Click the same square. Turn off Aspect Ratio. Change our height back to 1. And then we're going to set keyframes, move our playhead to the left. I'll set a keyframe, move in about a second and a half, set another keyframe, go to the first keyframe. And this one, and this time, let's change the width down to nothing. Click on OK. Now I'm going to take this track and turn it off, go to my first video. 
highlight that. And on this one, I want this in the upper left corner, so we're going to resize and reposition again on this one. And in the real world, I would make sure these are the same sizes. We won't worry about that in this tutorial setting. So now it's resized. I'm going to use that same tool that we illustrated before with a mask designer. Again, I want a square mask, but not quite. So I'll turn off aspect ratio, make it fully rectangle by typing a 1 in. And then we're going to move our playhead over, set one keyframe, set a second keyframe, move back to the first, and uh, let's have this go in widthwise as well. Click on OK. Now I have to make sure I have all my tracks turned on. I'll turn on track number four and track number five. Give myself some more real estate here, and then we'll play this and see what it looks like. One problem I have, as you can see, is that I have the video over the ending text. I don't want that to happen. Let me show you a way to fix that, but also to change it in such a way that it looks really nice in terms of animation. I'm going to move to the beginning of that last clip, press my home key. That will take me to the first frame of that title on track number two. And I'm going to go down to this track number five, which has the footage that is right on top of it, highlight it, do control T to split it, and take off the end. Now I could leave it at that, it would just disappear, but I'd like to do something different. So I'm going to click on that clip, go to my tools menu, go back to my mask designer. Now that I'm in my mask designer, I'm going to add an ending mask keyframe. We have the starting keyframe here, so I'm going to go about the same distance in on the other side and set another ski scale keyframe. Then I'm going to go to the very last frame and we'll set another scale. In this case I think I'm going to go take my height and move it down. Let me make sure which way we went before. Did we go height or width? Yeah it was height. Okay. So now it will squeeze up and be full screen and then come back. So now I've added motion on the end of that clip as well so it should look a little bit better when it comes to the text. So if I play the last two-thirds of this, we'll give us some more real estate so you can see. Let's play it and see what happens. I could work on the timing a little bit if I want, but when we're, when we're done, what we have is a pretty nice effect using a combination of the titles that we created by ourselves and using animation on the videos by masking.